hello everyone i hope all of you are doing good and uh, i hope that you are enjoying the sessions as well so if yes please do subscribe and share with your friends as well so uh, today we will discuss a bit about vault e and why is that because uh, i have got a lot of messages from all of you to do a session on session on vault e as well so based on popular demand i think i, I will do a couple of sessions on vault e so to start with uh, i have uh, chosen the topic of vault e capacity planning and dimensioning so what which what we will do here is that we will look at the vault e structure and we will look at the practical aspects of capacity dimensioning and we will understand how different codecs are dimensioned and which channels and uh, which lt channels are the bottlenecks so uh, let's start with this and uh, see how it goes Firstly, before we start, we need to understand the difference between Vault-E and data traffic. So, in case of data, let's say you are watching YouTube or or Netflix, your traffic will be more like a burst. It will be more continuous. For instance, like this. Now, when we switch to Vault-E, uh, it will look like this. So, uh, for instance, we have Vault-E packet here. Then, after some time, the next Vault-E packet will come, and so on. the difference in time between vault e packets is usually around 20 milliseconds so what it means is that the vault e packet periodicity is 20 milliseconds so first vault e packet is generated around here then the next vault e packet will be generated 20 milliseconds later and what it means is that if we have a packet periodicity of 20 milliseconds then the number of packets in one second will be 1000 milliseconds divided by 20 is equal to 50 packets so uh, any vault e codec will generate around 50 packets per second so let's take an example of one codec if we look at 12.65 wideband amr wideband what it means is that this codec will generate 12.65 kbps or 12650 bits per second um, for this codec now we know that every codec will actually generate 50 packets in one, one second so the actual payload size of this this codec would be 12650 divided by 50 is equal to 253 bits per packet so this is how we find out the actual payload size of each codec now what is the actual packet size for that one we also need to add the header so if we are using ipv4 the header size is usually around 320 bits this includes ipv4 header rtp header and udp header so 320 bits plus 253 bits of the codec total will be 573 bits if we are using ipv6 then the header size is bigger we say 480 bits and in that case it will be 480 bits plus 253 bits is equal to 733 bits so this is how it will look like um in ipv4 header will be like this around 320 bits while 12.65 wideband wideband codec will have a payload size of 253 bits while in ipv6 header will be much bigger and the payload size will still be same now um if we know this now then we need to find the actual or effective bit rate needed for this codec and that will be 573 bits which is the size of the packet for instance in ipv4 into 50 packets is equal to around 29 kbps so what it means is that a codec with 12.65 kbps bit rate needs around 29 kbps actually uh, to deliver that traffic over the air this is because the header size will also needs to be included in that now if you are clear on that let's take an example to see what is are the capacity limitations of this so if i am using 12.65 wideband amr codec we find out that one volt user active volt user it needs 29 kbps effectively to uh, to send this over the air then 10 volt users will need 290 kbps 100 volt users will need around 2900 or 2.9 mbps similarly 200 will need 5.8 mbps or 400 will need 11.6 mbps now when we look at these values 11.6 mbps for 400 volt users is not really much 
because you know an LTE at 10 megahertz channel can easily support 70 75 Mbps if you're using 2 plus 2 MIMO and 64 QAM and it can support much higher if you're using 256 QAM and 4 cross 4 MIMO so now let's take an example if I have 200 voltage users I am using I need 5.8 Mbps but how many of them will be sent in one subframe so let's say if I have subframe 1 here and all 200 users are sent uh, their packets are sent here then next packet will come in subframe 21 because we have a 20 millisecond packet generation for volte right but that is not how it happens uh, how it happens actually is that we we have to divide these 200 users in all these 20 subframes right that will be a better um, approximation for capacity so let's say if I have 200 active users then I know the volte period is 20 milliseconds so how many users I can put in each subframe so it will be 200 by 20 is equal to 10 if I have 400 volte users then 400 by 20 is equal to 20 that means 20 users will be there in each subframe so it will actually look like this let's say I have 200 volte users so first 10 here next 10 here next 10 here up till this point the last 10 of the 200 will be around about here and then on SFN 21 we will have the same users which were the first 10 users their packet second packet will come here right so this is how it will look like when we talk about um, volte capacity uh, calculations for 200 volte users so remember this for 200 active volte users we have 10 users per subframe now let's use this number and see what we can calculate for each channel now in LTE basically uh, for downlink we have two important channels the PDSCH which carries the data and the PDCCH which carries the control now if we have PDSCH let's say we have 10 megahertz so we have total 50 PRBs and we know that the 12.65 codec the packet size was 573 bits when we talk about IPv4 and now um, if we say that we need 573 bits then as per 3GPP we need around 2 PRBs to carry 573 bits if we use the transport block index of 15 this, this index is used normally when users are in medium and fair radio conditions now for 200 volte users uh, as I explained we will have 10 volte users per TTI or per subframe so that is 10 that means the total number of PRBs we will require for this configuration will be 10 into 2 is equal to 20 which is much lesser compared to our capacity of 50 PRBs so it means that with 200 volte users our PDSCH capacity is not a bottleneck let's say if the users are in um, a bit poor conditions radio conditions then they will use a lower TBS let's say TBS index 11 then we have uh, three PRBs to, to carry 573 bits in that that case for 200 active users 10 into 3 we will use 30 PRBs which is also lesser than our capacity of PRBs and thus we can say that PDSCH capacity is not a bottleneck when we talk about 200 volte users per cell however let's have a look at the PDCCH now in case of PDCCH we can use up to three symbols max and with 50 PRBs we can have around 40 CCs for 10 megahertz now uh, what happens here is that symbol number one will have around 8 CCs symbol number two will have around 16 CCs and symbol number three will also have around 16 CCs why the first symbol has less number of CCs that is because uh, the first symbol also carries PH PC Fitch and the reference signals in LT so the remaining number of uh, resource elements used for PDCCH will only be able to generate around 8 CCs and CCs are the control channel elements so they are used for PDCCH for allocation of resources so if I have 40 CCs and for each Volte user if I assign 4 CCs per UE so how many users I can um, I can schedule so 40 divided by 4 that is 10 and we know that for 200 Volte users we have 10 users per TTI so that means if we have 10 users per TTI using 4 CCEs per user then all uh, 40 CCEs 
will be utilized by these 10 users. So our PDCCH capacity will be a bottleneck for 200 active users, active Volti users, when we talk about uh, 4 CCs per user. So this is how we can uh, find out multiple different values for different codecs and different bandwidths and uh, uh, and then we can uh, make our own assessment so, so let's say uh, i've done a bit of uh, some projections let me show them so let's say i have three codecs 12.2 narrow band uh, 12.65 wide band and 23.85 wide band now this is the highest capacity codec so if you look at this over here we have if we have 100 users then 12.2 and 12.65 they can they need around 3 mbps this is the uh, number of the volti capacity required in kilobits per second while the 23.85 will need around 4 mbps which is of course not much if we keep going over here with 1000 volti active users 12.2 and 12.65 they need around uh, 28 to 29 mbps while uh, 23.85 needs 40 mbps so even with 40 mbps it's not something that is huge for LTE 40 mbps is something that LTE can easily sustain so um, with, but the important thing to see here is that higher the codec the bigger the codec the more capacity it needs right if you look here the green bars are higher than the gray and the blue bars so this is one thing to understand however when we look at the projections for control channel for PDCCH so if you look here this is PDCCH utilization the red line here indicates the 100% PDCCH utilization so we reach 100% when the Volti users are 200 and if you look here all three bars blue gray and green have the same values why is that because if you look here from the PDCCH and PDSCH perspective PDCCH resources, if you want to allocate some resource on PDSCH, you need to give a PDCCH CCE. So let's say I give four CCEs for this orange allocation. Now I have a red allocation which is smaller than the orange allocation. The number of CCEs will still be same. They don't change. Now if I have a green allocation which is very big, even then the number of PDCCH CCEs are still the same. So number of CCEs are still the same but they can uh, allocate different number of resources so let's say if the orange one here is 23.85 and the red one is 12.65 they have different values on the PDSCH so they have different data capacity requirements but they have still the same PDCCH requirements they still need the same number of CCEs to be allocated so what this shows us is that the PDCCH capacity is still same the PDCCH capacity requirement is still same irrespective of the codec size okay that is why we have we can see that all three bars here are having the same values when it comes to PDCCH utilization while they are different when it comes to PDSCH utilization now similarly if we look at 10 megahertz and we say that we will assign two CCEs per UE what will happen is that we will hit the 100% mark around 400 UEs. When the Volti users are around 400, then we will achieve 100% PDCCH utilization. So when we talk about this, so we can say that we have uh, increased our, PDC our PDCCH capacity perspective by using two CCs per UE. However, with two CCs per UE, it will not be that robust. So you might have quality issues for Volti. Now this was all uh, for the Volti capacity perspective and dimensioning perspective. So um, in short what it means is that usually we, uh, when we do capacity dimensioning we hit the PDCCH channel as a bottleneck while the PDSCH might not be a bottleneck. So what we need to expand is the PDCCH first. So uh, in the next video I will explain how to tackle this and how to relieve the congestion that we have for Volti. So stay tuned. I hope you like it and please do subscribe. Thank you so much.